Hey guys, it's Norm from Tesla.com here at CES 2013. And one of the biggest, or most surprising announcement at least at CES is from NVIDIA. Not only did you guys announce the Tier 4 chip, which I think everyone kind of expected, mm -hmm. but also a new handheld a console, Project exactly. Shield. So I'm here with James Wayne, he's a project manager at NVIDIA, and we've actually got Shield right in front of us. Um, so tell me about Shield. It's, a, it's an Android device. It is Android, that's right. It's running the latest version of Jelly Bean. Um, we didn't want to build a new proprietary OS or a new proprietary system. So this is the first you know, handheld platform which is totally open. And it's based on the idea that there are lots of great Android games out already, lots of great PC games. There's no need to create something new in a new world garden. So you know, run both of these games fantastic uh, on this portable device here. It's powered by Tegra 4. Uh, it's a five-inch uh, multi-touch display, 720p resolution, very high quality. Yeah, so you have the five-inch display on top, and the display looks good, multi-touch. Tegra's runner underneath here. Uh, we saw in that CG render, there's a heat sink on top, so there is actually a little bit of active cooling. Yes. You know, we've been running this for a little bit. It's not that warm because the screen is up here. Exactly. Um, but there is a big battery in here. So you guys are really emphasizing a long battery life. Exactly. Right? You know, with some of the portable devices out there, you don't get a great deal of battery life. Uh, we built a, uh, a, a very sub substantial battery system in this. It's put, uh, we've actually put it uh, underneath the controller handheld, so you get really nice weight balance. It feels really nice and uh, strong under your arms, under your hands, sorry. Uh, and it doesn't kind of you know make it top heavy, so it's a, it's a very good ergonomic design. And the air intake comes in the front and then pops out in the back. Exactly, you don't even feel that it. it's it's all silent. Very standard controls, you know, Xbox style controls, mm -hmm. and that's because you know with Android you can plug an Xbox controller and play those games. Mm -hmm. So there are really three things you can do with this. You can do Android, your standard your web browser, email, pictures, and, and whatever. You can do Android games with Tigra Zone. Exactly. So for example, you were showing me a boxing game earlier. Exactly. And that looked good rendering at 720. Exactly. But it could actually render up to 4K? Of course. This, so Tegra 4 is very powerful. It's six times more powerful than Tegra 3. It can do 4K video. It can output to, uh, to an HDMI display like on this TV uh, at you know, 1080p or 4K if you have such a, such a display. And so it's, right now it's HDMI connection, HDMI, and that can render up to 4K and actually downsample on the uh, on the screen right here. Absolutely. Um, most games do run at 720 there, right? Yes, yeah, so it's designed for 720p gameplay. So you guys have obviously partnered with a lot of game makers on Android for Tigra Zone, but what's most interesting is that this can actually play PC games remotely. Right. You need a GeForce graphics card, 600 class or higher. Comes exactly. Out. And on that, you'll, you know, it's, it's a great graphics card by itself to play games, but you're only rendering 720 on your PC screen. That's right. And it's still going to go through that pipeline, and in Kepler, there is a hardware H.264 decoder right. specifically made to just compress video. Exactly. Because it's all in the same memory buffer, it's compressing the video there, then, over your Wi-Fi network, over a router, that's going to go just to here, over Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. 802.11n. Mm -hmm. And for example, if you hit the NVIDIA button, then their PC, you can connect to, for example, a PC here with a 680 exactly. graphics card. When you load this up, it's, it's load up rather quickly, we're in Steam Pick Picture Mode. So you're actually just tapping into Steam or whatever library you have logged in on your desktop. You can't go actually go into de your Windows desktop though, right? You, I mean, you, in theory, that's what you're doing, but you know, the user interface want to make it really, really sensible for a device like this. And the touchscreen won't actually work with that, it's just your, it's as if you're plugging a G4, uh, Xbox controller into... Exactly, that's the best analogy. PC. So uh, yeah, you can, you can, you know, a lot of PC games are built with Xbox style controls, and uh, you'll be able to play that uh, effectively, you know, as over wireless anywhere in your home. So a lot of the concern comes with latency, mm -hmm. and what is, what is the latency target that you guys have? So we want a latency experience that's no that's on the same level as if you're using a wireless console controller playing a console game. And we've actually measured it, you know, if you have a decent graphics card and a pretty stable home network, um, the latency is actually lower than using, say, a wireless Xbox controller controlling your Xbox games. So we, uh, we, we think the latency is actually going to be very, very good. Yeah, earlier we were playing, I think, Need for Speed, and <laughs> it felt like in real time. It was exactly. Really cool. And other people have tried first-person shooters, and uh, you know they came here just to test the latency, and you pull the trigger, bang, the bullet comes out. Awesome. Very you guys good. have uh, announced availability in Q2? We're targeting Q2 for no, release. Pr no pricing yet, though. No pricing on this one. All right, we'll stay tuned for Project Shield. It's definitely a very interesting device. Keep an eye out for it. We'll have more about Project Shield on Tesla.com. Thank you, James, so much. Thank you. Um, and we'll have more. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.